Have you ever spent entire days in bed due to depression? If so, what were your first steps in breaking this cycle? User 1. Friend knew I was having trouble so he came to my apartment in his very loud way and spoke very firmly about me getting up and getting a shower while pulling open the curtains. He came every day until I started doing it myself. And, user 2, I described the worst of depression as the following image. You're in a field in the pouring, freezing rain. You're soaking wet, shivering, and miserable. To keep warm, you've curled into a ball. You're still cold and wet and miserable, so you curl up tighter. Now, you reach a point where you can't curl up any tighter, you can't use this loop to get any warmer, but uncurling requires giving up the tiny spot of warmth you have. You really should get up and get out of the rain, but to do so will sacrifice any and all comfort you've found. Now, imagine an outside person coming up to the clutched ball of desperate shelter, maybe with rain gear and a hot beverage. Hey, says the outsider, I've got some stuff that will help. The curled up person can't even uncurl to accept it, because uncurling will inherently let the encroaching, permeating cold, wet, misery into those last tiny comfortable warm and dry spots, and thus, you're trapped. When you're in the lowest, deepest parts of depression, there's a tiny, fragile glow of cathartic comfort that you will protect with all your might, and the only way out is to sacrifice that comfort completely for the largely uncertain hope that there's a better comfort elsewhere. Depression is very, very difficult to escape, and, user 3 I've had friends help pull me out of depression and I've done the same for some of them. I have two kinds of friends, those that talk to me regarding my depression the same way they talk to me regarding anything else, and those that talk to me like I need extra care and as if my feelings need to be tiptoed around. The friends that treated my depression like any other aspect of my life were the ones that helped the most. The whole approach of well hey I know you're feeling down, and I don't want to push you too much, but why don't we go wash some dishes and straighten up a bit and maybe you will feel better did it have anywhere near the same effect as my buddy who walked in saying hey loser, this place is a shithole get her ass out of bed and handle her shit before I whoop your ass, the latter buddy is who I give the most credit for helping me out of my hole, he was a sarcastic smart ass and treated me the same as he always did, he made me realize that I'm still me, just going through some shit, and he wasn't judging me for the shit I was going through so why should I judge me for it? It's not necessarily tough love, it's just refusing to let your friend's depression define them. If you approach them differently due to their depression, you're letting it define your interactions which makes depression even harder for them to deal with, and, user 4, for about 2 years I barely got out of bed to do anything other than work or eat, I live in Mexico, so everything can be delivered, I couldn't even get myself to clean my app regularly, and that depressed me even more. So I was always beating myself up about all of the time I was spending in bed doing nothing, wasting my life. One day I decided I would stop beating myself up and instead give myself credit for any little thing I accomplished. I told myself, if my apartment is a disaster and all I can do today is clean one spoon in a sink full of dirty dishes and go back to bed, that will be enough and I will give myself credit for it. So I did that. Every day I did one thing, no matter how small and I told myself a good job, you did it. Now you can go back to bed guilt free, little by little I did more and more every time I got up. Sometimes I would start with one spoon but clean several more dishes, until eventually I was getting them all done. Then I moved on to getting myself to walk the very short walk around the block to go to the deli to get my sandwiches, instead of having them delivered. I wouldn't pick myself up because I wasn't cooking, I gave myself credit for getting up to get my food. Eventually I started cooking again, baby steps, give yourself credit. Encourage yourself like you would encourage a small child. Don't beat yourself up. Be very mindful of the content you're consuming as well. I started making sure everything I saw online was positive and encouraging and I unfollowed and muted news, and anyone who posted outrage bait on social media. It all adds up eventually. I pulled myself out of 20 years of depression and it all started by giving myself credit for washing a spoon. User 5, I fell into alcoholism after I got divorced. I managed to stay functional enough to stay just on the brink of being homeless. I had a part-time job, small apt, a blanket, my computer and my cat. I walked to work since I had no car. All I did was work, come home and drink myself into oblivion for some years. Many days I didn't eat. I just spent all my money on alcohol. I had to keep the cat fed at least. I had work friends who were all very kind and knew about the situation, but I never hung out with them. I just shut myself away and let me my life waste away. All my old friends lived in other towns and I've never been very close with my parents. 
One of my high school friends knew about the situation and had been encouraging me to start a career. I would double in self-studying for certs but always fell back into routine quickly. I was too stupid and useless to ever achieve anything. The best thing I had ever accomplished, finding my wife, I had fucked up. Finally he had a space open up after a roommate left and offered it to me. I honestly almost didn't take it, but forced myself to take a leap. This dude wasn't just there to listen to all the shit that was weighing on me. He also kept pushing me to keep up with my studies. A huge part of me found it super annoying and just wanted to let myself wallow, but he persisted. I even ended up building up a substantial debt to him, like in the thousands, and he is not a rich man. Fast forward a few years and now I actually have a career, paying off my debt, and I'm getting my life back on track. Not to mention remembering how to feel happy about even little things again. It's scary to think about where my life would be had I not met my friend, or even just not taken the leap. The fact that I have a friend that has more faith in me than I could ever have in myself is something that will always keep me going. I feel like I need to work to deserve it, Yano. TLDR, if not for my friend I would be dead or drunk in a ditch somewhere. And, user 6, yes, when you are that deep in the cycle you have to find the strength to stop waiting for the motivation to do stuff. The inactivity drains motivation and energy and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You don't do anything so you aren't motivated to do stuff so you keep not doing. Instead pick something relatively small that you know you can force yourself to do even without motivation in advance. It can be as simple as taking dirty plates downstairs and getting a fresh glass of water. Maybe going and brushing your teeth. Having a shower is a really good step if you can psyche yourself up for it. Being clean really helps break that cycle. Even just getting up to put on some clean pyjamas and finding a face cloth to wipe away some surface grime. The point is, force yourself into that first step even when you aren't motivated. Getting one thing done will remind you that it wasn't as bad as your brain thought and it will be easier to persuade yourself next time. Each activity you manage to complete will help to wake up some motivation and bring you closer to breaking the cycle. Good luck. It's an awful place to be and I wish you all the best on your recovery. Take it one step at a time, one day at a time. It's hard, scary and exhausting but you can do this. Edit. Thank you for the silvers gold kind strangers, absolutely not needed. It's reward enough seeing all the amazing responses and feedback from everyone. And, user 7, yes, just recently, something small happened with a tiny fight I had with my mum and I spiralled out of control. I was running on autopilot for days and just so so miserable but also felt nothing. I haven't felt that bad in years, it really scared me. I tried all the usual routes of helping myself, gardening, listening to good music. Cleaning my house, baking some sweet treats or preparing a delicious meal. None of it was working. Finally my mum asked me if something was wrong because I must not have been hiding it as well as I thought. I said no stupid then. When she left I sobbed uncontrollably until I gained enough strength to go to her house and tell her everything. I cried in her lap for 30 minutes and I've felt a little better each day since then. Next time, I'm going straight to the last step of talking about it. I don't want to have to feel that terrible and scared again anytime soon. And, user 8, one step at a time. Come on words hugs and tea. Can't face university? No problem. You don't have to go to uni. Just sit up. Can you do that for me? Just take a deep breath and sit up straight. Okay. So far, so good. Now stand up. Your chest is already cold from the blanket falling off. Just stand up. Great. Get into the shower and turn on the water. It's okay if you have to lean your head against the wall. Just get in the shower and turn the water on. That's all. Sweet. Now eat breakfast. You love food. Everybody loves food. All right. Grab your bag and head out to the bus stop. That kind of stuff. I used to go for the long-term motivation. Seize the day. Pursue your dreams. Type thought process but sometimes the grandeur of it all just intimidates me and makes me feel so small and helpless and it seems so far off. So I went the other way and made everything small so they seem super easy for me. I don't usually go this route, but when the times get tough and I just want to stay in bed and let the world go on without me, this is the type of thinking I do to get myself out of bed. And, user 9, take a shower is a big one, go outside, not just your room outdoors outside, even for five breaths makes a difference, do one task, you decide what you're capable of doing, take things to the sink or empty the sink or clean a plate or gather up trash, but it has to be one physical thing, not just thinking of it and planning it out, then be grateful you did the thing, be proud that it's done, when the self-loathing kicks in telling you how much more you're supposed to do, realize that you've already done more than you were doing, and who did it, 
If you can do one thing, then surely you can do more. That's it. Take deep breaths, like exaggerated breaths. Fresh air as often as you can, and drink lots of water. You can do it and you are capable. Everything starts with tiny steps. You writing this was your first physical tiny step. Congratulations, and thanks for watching. Please give a like if you enjoyed the video and hit subscribe if you want to see more. See you later.